Hi Holtbrook families, my name is Miss Boots and I will be reading chapter 12 from Pet Wars. But first, we do have a joke. Why are cats good at video games? Because they have nine lives. So chapter 12, Sunday, March 11th, money saved, $45, six cents. Dad worked us to the bone. I felt a little like Cinderella, slaving for my wicked stepmother so I could attend the ball. Except having a dog was way better than going to some stupid dance party in a pumpkin. But I still wasn't any closer to the brilliant money-making idea I needed. Time was dwindling quickly, too. Unless I began making a money pronto. I would never earn enough cash by the end of the month. Dad's shoes had never looked better, though. His apartment had never looked cleaner, and somehow Lexi removed that pee smell from the couch. For all the work we did, we should have gotten a kennel full of pets. I collected all the garbage the next morning. I didn't need to since Dad had already agreed to a pet, but I wanted to stay on his good side. Parents change their minds sometimes. Just a few weeks before, Mom agreed to let me sleep over at Malcolm's. But then I accidentally broke a vase in the living room, and just like that, I was grounded. She said that I should know better than to play ball in the house, but she was wrong. I didn't know better. I knew better now. You think that would count for something. So when dad asked me to take out the garbage, I didn't complain like I would normally. I smiled and grabbed the trash. A large dumpster sat outside the building. All the apartment people threw their garbage in there. Trash was collected on Mondays, and since today was Sunday, the dumpster already overflowed with bags in a fly-covered heap. The garbage stench was overpoweringly awful, too. Don't flies smell things? You'd think they'd prefer to whiz around a chocolate factory or something. That's where I'd hang if I were a fly. I had to throw the big I had to throw the bag high in the air so it would land on top of Garbage Mountain. Just as I let the bag go, just as it soared to the top, I heard barking. It was a sign that I was meant to win this challenge, and not a sign with glitter on it either. The bark was a large dog, rough, five rapid deep woofs, one after another. Across the street, a lady walked a German Shepherd, golden hair, black back powerful body. I bet it weighed more than the lady walking it. It strode forward quickly, as if it didn't want to be late to a dog party or somewhere else. The lady struggled to hold it back, constantly shouting, slow down racer, not so fast racer, stop that racer. Each time the German Shepherd slowed for a split second and then hurried forward again. If she wanted a slow dog, maybe she shouldn't have named it Racer. It's not easy to walk big dogs anyway, especially when they don't listen too well. I suppose small dogs and medium dogs can be hard too. It depends on the dog, but that's just another reason why they are so wonderful. They aren't the same. They aren't toys in a box. Dogs can be smart, laid back, happy, grumpy, sleepy, dopey, and the rest of the seven dwarfs except for Doc, since his name didn't make any sense. It's not like the guy was a doctor or anything. The lady could have used some help, but I couldn't waste time goofing off and walking dogs. I needed to think of a way to make money and wipe that sneaky grin off Lexi's stinky face. And then it hit me. A lot of people need help walking their dogs. The Finches always complained about taking alfalfa out I enjoyed it when they let me. It was so obvious. What do I like to do? Walk dogs. What do people need? Dog walkers. People pay money, walk dogs, me. It was brilliant, although not very good English. The big idea, the money-making plan that wasn't impossible or crazy or stupid or anything other than perfect. Supply and demand. Dogs demanded to be walked, I would supply it. It would also be a great way to show mom I was responsible enough to take care of a dog. Then she always said how irresponsible I am. That's a win-win, and it would be fun. That's a win-win-win, and I bet I could earn money way faster than Lexi. That's a quadruple win, but most important, 
That's a quadruple dog win. I couldn't wait to see Lexi's face when I raked in the dough and walked my new dog through the front door. I pictured Lexi sulking in the corner, muttering the name Fluffernutter to herself. It was such a great picture. I wished I could frame it. I sprinted back to dad's apartment and went straight to his computer. I was still a little annoyed that my brilliant Otto's amazingly delightful rainbow crazy cookie sale signs were wasted. But I didn't need fancy lettering or color borders or pictures of rainbows or even Lexi's extra glittery drawings because I had a great idea. And great ideas rise to the top like inflatable pool toys. Too poop to walk your dog? Then you ought to call Otto. Rain or shine, I'm dependable and reliable. Need a break? Then you gotta call Otto's. Dog walking service, 555-1286. I printed two dozen of the signs on dad's color printer. As the last one spit out, dad shouted from the hallway. Ready champ? It's time to go back to mom's house. I sure am. I couldn't wait to hang up my flyers around town. Where's Lexi? Your mom picked her up a couple of hours ago. She had a bunch of kids waiting for her. I think she's tutoring them. Isn't that great? Two hours ago? That meant she was making money while I was making signs. I felt my face turning red. I wanted to scream. I forced myself to take deep breaths and calm down. She might have had the upper hand now, but with my you want to call auto dog walking service, I'd have the upper, upper hand soon. Dad drove me back to mom's house and I got to sit in the front seat. It wasn't a very nice car, old, small, and the CD player didn't work. When dad moved out, mom kept the good car. You and your sister are really serious about getting a pet, aren't you? Asked dad. I want a dog more than anything. Then you'll have to earn a lot of money. We pulled up into mom's driveway. Hold on, said dad, as I grabbed the handle to open the door. He reached into his jacket pocket and pulled out his wallet. He handed me a $10 bill. Don't tell your sister. Thanks, Dad, I said, beaming. I'm going to win this challenge. We'll have a dog in this family. I always wanted a dog. It'd be a lot of work, but it'll help you guys learn about being responsible. Good luck. Hey, do you have another $400 in your wallet you can give me? Dad shot me a dirty look and said, do you even listen when I talk? Just asking. Dad honked to let me know up, to let mom know I was home. I ran inside the house, dropped my overnight bag in the hallway, and headed to the stair staircase. Do I get a hello? Asked mom. Hello, I said. Mom pointed to my bag in the middle of the hallway. That goes in your room. I was taking it upstairs, I said. Not really. I grabbed my bag and lugged it up the staircase. Just as I reached the top step, I heard purring. I stiffened. The hair on the back of my neck stood up. A fat, white cat with plush, fluffy hair walked past. It looked up at me with burning blue eyes and an arrogant Lexi-like smirk. It purred softly. It rubbed itself against my leg. Fluffernutter? I get gasped. I couldn't breathe. I staggered back. There you are, Sasha. Avery Maples, a friend of Lexi's, walked out of Lexi's room and picked up the horrid ball of walking white fur. Thanks for letting me bring her over, she said to Lexi who followed her friend into the hallway. Avery stroked Sasha's coat. Soon, our cats can play together. I glared at Lexi and at Avery, and most of all, at Sasha. I wasn't fooled by the cat's cuddliness. I wasn't taken in by the way she purred softly in her owner's arms and batted her little eyelids. Cats were the enemy. Lexi was the enemy. Get used to it, Lexi snapped at me. We'll be living with a cat soon. I'll never get used to a cat. That's a shame, because mom says we can put her litter box in your room. What? I shouted in horror, and Lexi laughed as she walked her friends downstairs. I could still feel the lingering tingles of where the cat had rubbed against my leg. It spread through my body like an ice cube dropped down your shirt. Time was wasting. I had less than three weeks, and I had so much money to earn. I shouted to my mom that I was heading out and zoomed out the door with my dog walking flyers. I taped a few of them on lampposts in the neighborhood. People might notice them as they walk their pets. I put flyers on doors of houses that had dog toys in their yard or had fences. I even rode my bike all the way to Grand River Avenue 
and put a flyer on the bulletin board inside Snood's grocery store. Although I was careful Mr. Snood didn't see me and I stayed away from the giant sacks of cans. Many people tacked up signs on that bulletin board. There were ads for babysitting services, housekeeping services, used furniture, old bikes, and tutoring. Tutoring. One sign stood out because it was covered in glitter. Lexi's after school tutoring. It included her phone number and a drawing of some books and pencils. I tapped, I taped my flyer on top of it. When I got home, I plunked my butt on the couch and put the phone in my lap. No one is allowed on the phone, I yelled. I'm expecting important calls, dozens, maybe hundreds, all day and night. Give me the phone, demanded mom. About two minutes later, I need to make a call. No way, Jose, I shook my head. This phone is tied up. I'm not kidding, give it to me, insisted mom, holding her hand out. You're the one that won't let me get a cell phone, I complained. All my friends have cell phones. Lexi has a cell phone. You'll just lose it. I'm responsible. Mom arched her eyebrow. Your jacket is sitting in the front hallway and you lost a shoe last month. How does someone lose a shoe? Losing a shoe is actually really easy. Easier than you would think anyway. When we get a dog, you'll see, I said. I'll be the most responsible kid in the entire world. I'll probably win responsibility awards, trophies and stuff. Giant ones the size of my head. Still, I got up and hung my coat in the mudroom, but I held on to the phone too. I sat on the couch for two hours. I didn't turn on the television since I didn't want to be distracted. I should have done homework, but I didn't think I could concentrate long enough. I was way too excited, but the phone never rang. No matter how long I stared at it and no matter how hard I thought positive phone thoughts, I hoped my brain energy would reach out to all the dog owners in the world and make them dial our phone number. Finally, the phone rang. I picked it up before the first ring ended. Otto's dog walking service, I shouted. You ought to call Otto, and you did. Call Otto, that is. I needed to work on my phone answering skills. Hi, Otto. This is Mrs. Schmidt. Is your mother home? Mrs. Schmidt was one of my mom's nurse friends. She is, I said and hung up. It was rude, maybe, but I couldn't tie up the line. A few minutes later, the phone rang again. This time, I answered a little bit more cautiously. Hello? Is this Otto's dog walking service? Said a low, muffled voice. I want to hire someone to walk my 14 vicious, people-hating Doberman Pinchers. I can pay you $500. Hi, Malcolm, I sighed. Your mom saw the sign at the grocery store. Really? I asked, perking up. She said it covered up a really pretty glittery sign, so she moved it over. I groaned. No one has called yet. I laid down on the couch and rested my back on my hand on my forehead. My signs have been up for over two hours. Lexi is in the kitchen tutoring someone right now, I whined. Want to play soccer then, said Malcolm. I'm waiting for the phone to ring with dog walking appointments. I can't. But you just said no one is calling and you could use the practice. I said no one has called yet. The yet is an important part. They could call any second, and I don't need soccer practice, I said, lying through my teeth. I'm a star. We're a star. You couldn't beat a potato in soccer right now. Sure I could. I was pretty positive I could crush a potato in soccer, and I'm still better than you. You couldn't beat a worm in soccer, a dead worm. You're a head-butting soccer butt. You're a dead worm losing soccer stinker. You're an uncoordinated butter footed leather ball eating baboon. I probably could have topped that insult, but I didn't want to stay on the phone too long. People might be calling in any moment. I should go. Good luck, ball baboon. Later, soccer stinker. I waited almost half an hour for the phone to ring again. I took a deep breath and answered. Hello, I murmured. This is Otto. Otto's dog walking service? Is this the right number? It was the lady's voice, old and cracked. I imagined an elderly woman with a cane, someone who hadn't taken her dog for walks in years. You ought to call Otto, I blurted, my heart beating rapidly. No dog is too big or too small. Hello, Otto. My name is Mrs. Link Letter. I need someone to walk Buttercup. She's very lively. So am I, I promised. Then you should be perfect. Can you come over around four o'clock tomorrow afternoon? I nearly leapt off my couch, my first job, and with a dog named Buttercup. 
I couldn't think of an easier first dog walking assignment, but I would have been happy to walk any dog, even one named Killer, Kid Eater, or worst of all, Fluffer Nutter. I could almost count my soon to half fortune in my head. In less than three weeks, I'd have my own dog to play with and walk every day. My very own dog and not a cat. I'd wipe that smug smile off Lexi's face, let her tutor the entire school if she wanted. I would win this war. I would be the best, highest paid dog walker in the history of dog walkers. Buttercup was just the start. So there. And that is the end of chapter 12. Thank you for listening.